Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of you all out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you're running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, How to Strengthen Your Inner Man. The text is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. The greatest tragedy that is taking place in our day is taking place among the people of God. To learn the great truths of God's word and do nothing with them is a tragedy beyond compare. To come to understand that God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and fail to walk in his light is a tragedy. To know that he has broken the shackles, the power of sin, and continue to live as a slave to sin is a tragedy. To read in Romans 8 that God has made us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord and consistently live a defeated life is a tragedy. To know that Jesus has given us power to train our serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing can harm us. And yet believers are living in fear and defeat and condemnation is a tragedy. To know that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed and yet believers don't pray for healing is a tragedy. This is the great tragedy of our time. This is exactly what Paul is praying against when he fell on his knees before the Father in Ephesians chapter 3 and prayed for the brothers and sisters in Ephesus. Let's take a look at the scripture for today. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21. King James Version. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Apostle Paul prays in this passage for five things in the lives of every believer that will transform their lives if they allowed it to take effect. The first is be strengthened in might by his spirit in the inner man. The second that Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith. The third that we will be rooted and grounded in love. The fourth that we will comprehend the love of Christ. The fifth, that we will be filled with the fullness of God so that we will be able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Today, in my sermon, I will focus on verse 16 of Paul's prayer. His main prayer in verse 16 says, for the saints to be strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man. It is so important for every believer to be strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man. Because when you're strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man, you can do great and mighty things. As the Bible says that you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To be strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man means to become strong with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
strengthen with might. The Greek word is dunamis, dynamite by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 16 says, according to the riches of his glory. He doesn't say according to the riches out of his glory. He says, according to the riches of his glory. Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, Bill Gates, or Warren Buffett were to give you $100, they will be giving out of their riches. But if they were to give you millions of dollars, they would be giving according to their riches. So in verse 16, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Amen. So to understand the meaning here of the inner man, we first must understand that man is comprised of the body, the soul, and the spirit. The trinity of man. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is more to you than just mind and body. Proverbs 23 verse 7, For as he tinkered in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. There is an outer man called the body. There is an inner man. We refer to the soul. Romans 7, 22, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. It is hidden from my eyes, but it's just as real. 1 Peter 3, 4, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. And there is the spirit of man. It is where Jesus Christ wants to dwell. Until Jesus is dead, there is a graveyard full of unclean spirits and demonic powers. When your spirit is born again, you become a spiritual man. Our outer body means little compared to the inner man. Remember that. See, Jesus says in John 6, he says in verse 63, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus only works from the inside out. Remember that. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Especially verse 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5, he says, For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, the pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted himself against the knowledge of God, and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper in good health, even as your soul prospers. For us to prosper and be in good health, our soul must first be healthy. Our soul comprises of our mind, our will, our emotions. So today, when we talk about our inner man, to be strengthened with might by the spirit in our inner man, is not talking about external or physical power. A Christian has strength available to him that are not connected with his muscles, with his health or money or abilities. It is a strength that is found in the inner man, a spiritual strength in the invisible part of you. The word strength, if you want to understand the word strength, to be strengthened in the inner man, you need to understand the opposite word of strength. The opposite word of strength here is to be discouraged. So to be strengthened, it can also mean to be encouraged. We need to be encouraged, to be lifted up, to be strengthened. We all know how to be physically strong. It means to be able to carry heavy things, lift weight, able to challenge the enemy and defeat the enemy. The question is how to be strong spiritually now. In the same way that you are strong physically, it means you can lift weight, you can persevere, you can take on the enemy and have victory. When you are strong spiritually, you'll be strong to persevere, 
to hold on even though when times are bad even though when things are not going your way even though when everything is against you even though we feel the world is coming upon you you'll be able to press on because you are strong in your inner man and we need to be strengthened in our inner man with might by the holy spirit to do great and mighty things for jesus this strength that we are talking about to be strengthened in the inner man is not found by our own self it is something that's outside it comes from god he comes from connection with the spirit so the first part of this sermon i described to you the prayer of paul in chapter 3 verse 16 i explained the meaning of it in chapter 16 that he will grant you according to riches and glory to be strengthened with might by spirit in the inner man the second part is i want to address the reason we need to be strengthened in the inner man why do we need to be strengthened in the inner man there are many benefits of a person with a strong inner man number 1 when you have a strong inner man you are able to comprehend the width the length the depth and the height of god's love be able you become sufficient to meet the need or task ephesians 3:18 says may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height When your inner man is strong you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil and to withstand in the evil day. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 11 says, "Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil." Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says, "Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand." To stand means to endure. You will be able to endure. To withstand in the evil day means you will be able to oppose the enemy. To stay faithful against the flow, against popularity, against demonic attack. when you have a strong inner man the third reason is when you have a strong inner man you are able to persevere and endure you are able to carry greater responsibility people of strong inner strength are people who are able to carry heavy or great responsibility god can trust them with greater response because god knows they have that inner strength to persevere to endure to go on and not give up and not surrender colossians 1:11 the niv version says be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience when you're strengthened in your inner man you'll be able to have endurance and patience so you can go on and on and on fulfilling god's purpose in your life so a strong inner man means a strong mind a single mindedness focus on god's purpose a strong will means understands the will of god determined to stay at it willing to fight and endure a strong emotion means established in the love of god your emotions that are according to the fruits of the spirit and not the fruits of the flesh proverbs 14:29 says he who is slow to wrath has great understanding but he who is impulsive exalts folly proverbs 16:32 says He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 to 18 says, "For which cause we fail not, but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory." While we look not at the things which are seen but at things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal the fourth reason is we need to have 
A strong inner man is to develop the whole man. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to develop the whole man. That's what a strong inner man means. That we are growing in the fullness of God. As the Bible says here in verse 19, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. The next reason is to overcome the world, the flesh and the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The fifth point is to stay free from sin's power and guilt. 1 John 2 14, I've written unto you fathers because we have known him. That is from the beginning. I've written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one. The sixth reason is to represent Christ completely and accurately. Ephesians 3 19 and to know the love of God with passive knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. The seventh reason is to do exploits. Daniel 11, 32. It says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Ephesians 3, 20. And unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To speak up in the midst of opposition against all obstacles. When you have a strong inner man, you are able to speak up. You'll be bold enough to speak up in the midst of opposition and all obstacles. The eighth point. The ninth point is to be able to support people who are suffering, who are burdened, who are struggling. Even though you might have your own burden, you are because you're a strong inner man, you are able to go out and help the others too. And the 10 point is to sing and praise God when everything is falling apart. When you have a strong inner man, when you are strengthened in your inner man, you'll be able to sing. You'll be able to praise God. You'll be a thank God. You'll be a keep going. Even though things seem to be falling apart. A good example is Paul and Silas praying and singing while in prison. Acts chapter 16 verse 24, 25. And 26. And then we see Peter, another example, managed to sleep well while jailed. Acts chapter 12, verse 6 onwards. Examples of people who face all kinds of difficulties, yet they are able to rest in the Lord, yet they are able to praise God, to glorify God, to thank God. Because why? They have a strong inner man. They are strengthened in their inner man. In the Bible, we look at many characters who are strong inner men who were able to go through all kinds of difficulty. We look at the life of David. We look at the life of Paul. We look at the life of Elijah. We look at the life of Moses. We look at the life of Jesus. Each one of them faced all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of persecution, all kinds of opposition, yet they fulfill their purpose on this earth. That is why Paul is praying that we'll be strengthened in our inner man. The third part of this sermon, which is an important part, is where I will address the matters on how to strengthen your inner man. The first way to strengthen your inner man is we must be filled with the Holy Spirit over and over. In Ephesians 3.16 says that he will grant you according to riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. He will grant you according to his riches of his glory. Not out of, but according to the level of his riches of glory to be strengthened with might, with dynamic power, with dynamite power by the Holy Spirit in a man. So the Holy Spirit is so important in our life to strengthen our inner man. Our inner man cannot be strengthened by our physical exercise. The inner man cannot be strengthened by all our methods. The inner man can only be strengthened here is by the Holy Spirit. We need to have fresh encounters with God. We need to be regularly filled and filled and filled so that we are not living on old oil. We are not living on past encounters. We are continuously refreshed. So every day we go forth, we go forth as a new man with fervor, with passion, with zeal, with fresh oil. 
all so we can be blessing to the people. That's how we strengthen the inner man. The disciples prayed in Acts chapter 1 and in chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and their lives were transformed from timid to boldness, from fear to boldness. They went forth doing great miracles. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they moved forth in power and moved in the gifts of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 9, verse 3, 4, 5, 6, we see how Paul, who was earlier called Saul, who was hunting and putting Christians in jail. Now he had an encounter with God. And when he had an encounter with God, he had a great passion to preach the gospel, to reach out to the lost, to touch the dying world. His inner man was stirred up and strengthened with fire. There are many benefits of the Holy Spirit. The first is the Holy Spirit gives power for freedom, liberty. Second Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Remember when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are no more entangled, you are no more fearful, you are no more restricted, limitations will be blown away. Suddenly you realize you can do great and mighty things, you can do greater things than you ever imagined because why? The Holy Spirit is working in you. The Holy Spirit aids in our prayer. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit is a maker intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Ephesians 2, 18, he says, For through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Ephesians 6, 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The third is the Holy Spirit inspires us to worship. Ephesians 5, 18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein we excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking in ourselves in psalms and hymns, the spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Philippians 3, 3, For we are the circumcision, we worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. The fruits of the Holy Spirit helps us to become more and more like Jesus Christ. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. The fruits of flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings and such like of which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit helps us to change our character to be more and more like Jesus Christ. The gifts of the Spirit empowers us to do great things that you and I can be strengthened in our inner man and move in healing and deliverance and miracle and faith and tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy and wisdom and knowledge and so forth. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, as I explained earlier, in Acts chapter 2, your life gets transformed. You get empowered to do the work of mission. The Holy Spirit gives us strength to be an overcomer, to be obedient to God. My own personal experience with the Holy Spirit, long time ago, many years back, when I finished my A-level or Form 6, and I was waiting for a place in the uni, and I went to our church and... While going to the service, the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I kept on speaking in tongues for, for more than an hour. And after that, my whole life was changed. I was so, I was set on fire for Jesus Christ. I was full of passion and zeal. I just wanted to learn more. I wanted to read more books, read the Bible, speak to the pastors. I wanted to evangelize the world. In fact, I was ready to pack up and go and be an evangelist in Africa. But that was not my timing. But that's what happened when the Holy Spirit came upon me the first time. And many more encounters we have. And many more encounters you will have to keep you on fire. So that you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. You don't need to take a sabbatical rest. Or you won't be dried up or burned out when you get infilled more and more and more. When you have an encounter with God, it renews, it revives, it sets you on fire once again. Every person who had an encounter with God, they were revived. 
They were stirred up. They were strengthened in their inner man. Blind Bartimaeus, the woman, the issue of blood, the bent up woman, Lazarus and his family, the person who was delivered from the evil spirit. Everyone, when you come and encounter with God, when you come and have a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit, it automatically will have an effect on your inner man. You'll be strengthened. You'll grow in maturity. You'll grow more and more like Jesus Christ. So we need to hear a voice. We need to hear a word from the Lord. We need to experience him. We need to hear him speak to us through the sermon. We need to hear him speak to us through the worship. We need to hear him speak to us through the Bible as we're reading the Bible. We need to get a Rema word. We need to get a prophetic word. We need to get the sword of the spirit, the Rema, the living word. So that it quicken, stir you up and set you on fire. Desire for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. First King chapter 19, 11 to 13. We look about at a moment in Elijah's life, the great and mighty prophet, great in word and deed, became depressed and how God took him out of his depression. And one of the ways is when God let him have an encounter with him, when he heard a small, still voice of God and his inner man was stirred up. The second way to strengthen your inner man is by reading the word, meditating on the word, waiting on the word, getting revelation from God. Romans 10, 17 says, faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith grows, you get strengthened when you hear the Rema word of God, the word for the hour. Ephesians 6, 13 to 7, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Put on the whole armor of God. And he talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is the weapon we use, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, the Rhema word, the living word, the word for the hour. That's what we need. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. The words that speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that Jesus speaks, they are spirit and they are life. And we need the word to come alive and convict our hearts and stir up our inner man so we'll be strengthened. Acts 2, 42 talks about the disciples after the Pentecost experience, what they continue to do, reading the word of God regularly, meditating, confessing the word. Read, meditate, pray, allow the Holy Spirit to bring the word alive. So we need to read the word. Jesus said in Luke 4, 4, Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He quoted this from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 13. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest now. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord to man live. Living by the Rema word of God. Trusting in God. They didn't know where they're going to get their food. They don't know where they're going to get their provision. All they had to depend on is the word from God. And that's how we are going to live, to be strengthened in the inner man, that we might be filled with the fullness of God. Is when you and I learn to live by the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish because lack of knowledge. It's important for us to read the word, to meditate on the word, to allow the word to come alive, the Rema word, to hold on the promises of God, to claim the word of God. There is power in the word of God. There is healing in the word of God. There is deliverance in the word of God. There is blessing in the word of God. There is prosperity in the word of God. So we need to take time when we read the word. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to bring the word alive so that it'll be applicable to you. It'll transform you. It's not enough for us just to get the historical, grammatical exegesis and philosophy of language. We need to depend on the role of the Spirit. It's not enough for us to just know the genre of the book we are reading. It's not enough for us to know the historical experience experiences, etc. We need to depend on the Holy Spirit also so that we can make the word come alive for us today. More than just history, but come alive. They can be applicable to us so you'll be strengthened. 
So we need to meditate on the word of God. You get revelation from studying and meditating on the word. Revelation drives out the rulers of darkness that try to control your life. Revelation from the word causes you to see what is hidden from the natural eyes. Revelation will give you understanding of mysteries of God. You'll begin to walk in a level of understanding is not common without revelation. That is the significant tool for victory in spiritual warfare and sustaining success in life. We need to meditate on the word and encounter the spiritual truths. It's a great teaching on how to read the Bible, a great teaching of all, which is known as Lectio Divina. The first is Lectio, a person reads a passage of scripture. The reading is meant to be intentional and slow. Most people read the focus passage several times through. Meditation next, the person doing Lectio Divina meditates on the scripture. This means he or she ponders over the passage seeking to hear from the Holy Spirit. He or she does not analyze the passage but does attempt to view it from various perspectives. Oratio, the step conscious of prayer. After having read and meditated on the passage, the practitioner of Lectio Divina brings it to God in prayer. And finally, Contemplatio. The Lectio Divina process concludes with contemplation. This is a type of listening or restful prayer. The practitioner seeks to simply sit in God's presence with his word still fresh on his mind. And we read in Psalms 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the spiritual truths. The next part of the word that can stir up our inner man is when we learn to confess the word. You have believed in the word. The Holy Spirit caused the word to come alive. You know the word is true. You know the promises is true. Now you confess the word. You confess the word to yourself. You confess the word into situations. You confess the word into people. You can confess the word of healing upon your life and also the people who are sick. Use the scripture. The scripture says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. The scripture says, fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. I am that God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I'll help thee, yea. I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, 1 Peter 2 24, who his own self bear our sins, his own body in a tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripe we are healed. Matthew 8, 16, 17, when even was come, they brought unto him many that were with devils and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. We can speak peace, the scripture on peace. Be careful for nothing but everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Finances, we can speak the promises. God has given you power to get well. The blessing of the Lord, he make it rich and he added no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22. Philippians 4, 19. But my God supply all your needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Proverbs 11, 24, 25. He that scattereth and yet increaseth, and he that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man give into your bosom. For the same measure that you meet with it, it shall be measured unto you. Power. For God has not given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. In 2 Timothy 1 7, Acts 1 8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me, born in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to uttermost parts of the earth. Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. Luke 10 19, behold, I've given you power to the serpents, the scorpions, or all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Ephesians 6 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power is might. Ephesians 3 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to power that worketh in us. Colossians 1 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Ephesians 1 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? The third method. Our way to strengthen our inner man is to pray. Ephesians 3.14 says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, 
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Here we see Paul praying. This is a prayer of Paul where Paul is kneeling. Kneeling in desperation, kneeling in humility and brokenness and praying for God to strengthen the believers of Ephesus with might in their inner man by the Holy Spirit. Ellen Redpart, a great Bible teacher, once was asked, how do you recognize a spiritual man? His answer was bent knees and wet eyes. He didn't just preach on prayer he demonstrated it. That's it. We need to learn to pray. When you pray, we need to pray until we touch the throne room of God. We need to pray until we experience a fresh touch from God. And we need to pray until heavens open and you and I have an encounter with God. Don't do religious prayers for the sake of praying, but pray with intensity, Pray with fervency, pray desperately, pray in brokenness and humility, pray crying out to touch the throne of God, to experience God. And when you touch God and heavens open to you, you'll be strengthened in your inner man. Even how broken you are, even how much of trouble you're facing, even what magnitude of mountain is in front of you, you will be strengthened when you encounter God and God will give you the wisdom, God give you the power, God give you the know-how to overcome it and be victorious. So praying is so important. First John 5, 14, 15 says, this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of. We must pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, it edifies you, it builds you up. That's what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. So how? To build ourselves, how to build our inner man, strengthen our inner man is one way, praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude 1.20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So we need to pray. We need to fast. We need to pray in the Holy Spirit. In the early years of my ministry, I fasted for 40 days only on liquid twice a year. That means 80 days a year, I'll only go on liquid, praying, fasting, praying in tongues so that God will strengthen my inner man, God will empower me, that I will be able to do great and mighty things for Jesus Christ. By going through this time of fasting and praying, I was able to be used by God mightily, where many people were healed, many people were delivered, incurable sickness were healed, delivered from demonic possessions, and many hundreds and hundreds of souls turned to Jesus. The presence of God would be so strong in the meeting. That's because why? We decide to fast and pray and pray in tongues where you are strengthened in the inner man and you carry the anointing to minister to people. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of Almighty. I'll say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. So even Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and 4, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, it all occurred because the disciples decided to wait. The people decided to wait in the upper room in obedience to Jesus' instruction and they prayed in one accord. So we see that in Acts 1.14. 2 Chronicles 20, we see when Jehoshaphat was surrounded by three nations, he was outnumbered. The Bible says he prayed and fasted and God gave him a word from the prophet and how he's going to have victory. Nehemiah, when he heard the condition of Jerusalem, the walls were broken down, the people were devastated. The Bible says when he heard these words, he sat down, he wept, he mourned certain days, fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Hezekiah, when he was surrounded by the Syrian army, threatened by the Syrian army, he fasted and prayed and God delivered him. And later on, when Isaiah the prophet came and prophesied to him, 
to get his house right because he's going to die soon, Hezekiah turned around and prayed unto the Lord and the Lord extended his life. So prayer is so important for us to encourage ourselves, to strengthen our inner man, to move in power, to move in miracle, to see God lifting us up out of our pits, see God lifting us up when we are downtrodden, pressed down and don't know what to do. In Paul's second letter, Timothy, he shared a story with a young preacher about the first time he was in prison in Rome. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4, 16 to 18, at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. This is Paul, a testimony. He said at his first defense, everybody deserted him. But Paul didn't hold it against them. He was not angry with them. He had no grudges against them. But he gave glory to the Lord because the Lord stood at his side and gave him support and strength. We need to rely on God. The second example is we read about David and Ziglag on how his whole, the houses were burned down, his, the family was taken in captivity and the people planned of stoning him and killing David and the people wept aloud until they had no more strength left to weep in 1 Samuel 30 verse 4. And then in 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, this is what David did. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David found strength in the Lord and we need to do that. We need to learn to find strength in the Lord. We need to learn to go to the Lord in prayer. We need to learn to wait on the Lord. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, it says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We need to wait with expectation. We need to wait. We believe knowing that God will come through. We need to believe in Him. The fourth method to strengthen our inner man is by keep doing your work or ministry. That's important. When you're down, when you're pressed down, sometimes you feel so depressed, you feel like giving up what God has called you to do. But we need to shake it off and carry on. Only when you carry on doing what God has called you to do, then you will receive the grace of God. Some of us, yes, we got different callings, different areas. God will take us at different time. But in that specific field or that particular area, we must carry on. It doesn't mean you change something that's the end. No, because at different times in our life, different junctures, suddenly God might change our direction or we might change and we pray for God for his blessing. But the importance, keep working, keep doing it. When you keep doing it, you will keep encouraging yourself. You sit at home doing nothing, then you'll feel depressed and down and your spirit man will be low. But you got to keep getting involved, doing something. Keep yourself busy, read something, do something, be part of something so that your spirit man is continuously stirred up, okay? With 1 Kings 19, we see about Elijah again when he was feeling depressed. In verse 8, and he rose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. And was so when Elijah heard he wrapped his face in mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And in verse 15, the Lord said, Go! Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king of Syria. And Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat, thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room. For Elijah to come out of the depression, he had a, an encounter with God. He heard that small still voice from God. And God instructed him to go back and do what he was doing before that. And that's so important for us to keep doing. Arise and go. Every time you see when he, Jesus did a miracle or disciples did a miracle, every time the owners of the person, arise, stand up, walk there, dip in that river. There's something we got to do. And for us to stir up the inner man, we got to keep doing. We got to keep doing. And also in our ministry, we got to associate with the right people. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Proverbs 27, verse 17 says, Iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another man. 
Go with people in the right spirit and walk in the spirit. The last method or way to make sure that we are strengthened in our inner man is for us to remove hindrances. That's so important, like a pipe. If you want the water to flow properly, you need to remove the blockages so that when you open the tap, it'll flow, it'll gush out. And for us to receive the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and be encouraged and lifted up and empowered and taken from one height to another height, we need to remove hindrances. And there are many hindrances that we need to deal with. Mark 4, 19 says, And the cares of this world and the deceitful are riches and the lust of other things entering, shock the world and it becometh unfruitful. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So we need to take responsibility for our own spiritual growth and development. We need to deal with areas that can hinder us from growing. One of it that hinders us from growing is when you do not have a fresh encounter with God, you keep living on your past encounter and don't have interest or don't have motivation to press in for more, press in for a fresh start, pressing for a fresh encounter, pressing to be filled more. The second is lack of prayer. Lack of effective prayer life can lead to lack of direction and discernment in one's life. Prayer is not one way. Prayer is two way communication with God. Therefore, prayer is not only an opportunity for us to talk to God, but prayer also an opportunity for God to speak to us. God hears us and we hear God. We draw spiritually close to the Lord by spending more time with Him. Remember, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. First Thessalonians 5 17 says, Pray without ceasing. James 5 16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the third hindrance is lack of Bible study and meditation on the word. Another hindrance to spiritual growth is when a person does not study or meditate on the word of God. Sometimes we just leave the Bible. We don't open the Bible at all. Dust on the Bible, dust on the holy book as the song goes. And the only time we hear the words or scripture is when we go to church. And some of us don't even go to church regularly. So we are not feeding ourselves with the living word. We are not meditating on the word. We are not taking time to wait on the Lord so the Holy Spirit can bring the word alive. So because of that, we are not developing our inner man. 2 Timothy 2.15 Be diligent to present yourself a proof to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Joshua 1, 8, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and discerner of thoughts, and the intents of the heart. The fourth hindrance will be lack of fellowship with other believers. It's so important for us to have fellowship. That's why the Bible instructs us to come to church so that we can continuously encourage one another. When you are down, the fellow believers or the pastor and the leaders will encourage you through sermons, through counseling, through talking, through encouragement. And other people are down, we can lift them up. So it's important for us as believers to encourage one another. So we need to have fellowship. Without fellowship with the right people, it can be difficult to grow spiritually. When you have the right people around you, such people edify, build, encourage you in the Lord. Fellowship with unbelievers can lead to backsliding and spiritual corruption. It's therefore important to guard yourself against wrong kind of influence as you grow in your Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. The fifth hindrance is listening to bad or false doctrine. We must guard ourselves so that we do not listen to false doctrines, wrong doctrines. There are so much of 
wrong doctrines going on in the Christian world at this moment. So we must be very careful. Many people have diluted the word so much. Many people have gone off tangent from the true gospel. And if we are not serious, we will go off and we might even lose our faith in Jesus Christ. So guard ourselves. False doctrine can hinder spiritual growth. When a person spiritually feeds himself with the wrong information, such doctrine will corrupt the person. Matthew 24 verse 11, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. 1 Timothy 4 1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy 4 16, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. And the sixth hindrance is living in sin. A life of unconfessed sin or hidden sin is a hindrance to your spiritual growth. When a person does not feel conviction when he sins or when he have hidden sins and is not repentant of a sinful habit, that sin can stagnate that person's growth in the law. It is therefore important to always confess our sins. We must also forgive our neighbor if our neighbor has offended us. We must walk in love and humility. Pride is the root cause of many sins. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In conclusion, do you want to become a better Christian? Do you want to become a more effective Christian? Do you want to become a more powerful Christian? Do you want to strengthen your inner man? First Timothy 4, 6 to 10 says, if you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished on the truths of the faith and of good teachings that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wife tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training of some value, but godliness has value for all things. Holding promise for both the present life and life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of people, especially of those who believe. Everything that's important is on the inside of us. We need to put emphasis on strengthening our inner man. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit strengthen us with might as we read this prayer of Paul. He desired the people of Ephesus to be strengthened in might by the Holy Spirit so that they can go forth and demonstrate who they are in Jesus Christ. In chapter 1, we read in chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. But now in chapter 3, Paul desires for the people not only to have revelation, but to go forth and demonstrate who they are in Jesus Christ. And we need to be strengthened in the inner man by the Holy Spirit powerfully so that we can demonstrate who we are. We can do great things for Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.